Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Ellen Brown, and I'm with Glass Roots, and uh, this is part of our virtual um, Through the Looking Glass Worker Space Lecture and Interview Series. And again, thanks for coming. Um, I'm pre-recorded today, so I won't be able to take your questions, but if you do have questions, go ahead and put them in the, um, I guess you can email them to me at ebrown at glassroots.org, and I'll do my best to get back to them uh, with you. Um, of course, I want to start by saying that, again, I'm Ellen Brown, and on normal days, you can find me uh, in the classroom at Glassroots upstairs. Um, where I teach business and entrepreneurial skills to teenagers and to adults in our um, business programs. And Glassroots is a glass art studio based in Newark, New Jersey, that works to ignite and build the cultural and economic vitality of our community through the glass arts. While access to our studios is limited at this time, each day we're bringing activities to you at home or wherever you are via Facebook, Instagram, and our website. Um, please be sure to sign up for our email list at info at glassroots.org and you can get the full week schedule ahead of time. Just send us your email address and um, we'll uh, get the information to you. And of course, follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. We continue to acknowledge what's going on in our communities and in our country right now. And we recommit ourselves to making our art in support of community and social justice, to hold programs that create economic opportunity, and to tell our students that they can be agents of change, to open their eyes to opportunities, to rise up and to fully embrace their potential. I just love saying that every time. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about pricing, um, about the things that you can do in your business that uh, can help get us ready for full reemergence. Um, I know this is going to happen in fits and starts, so it's really great to take this time and, you know, focus a little bit on yourself and think about the things that are going on in your business and things that you can um, improve while you have the moment. I have two resources I want to make sure that you're aware of. Um, the first is just to remind you that we um, offer our entrepreneur startup kit for legal concerns of small and micro businesses um, created by Michael Kasdan, who is a partner at the Wigan Law Firm in New York City. And it has all of the information that you would want to know about incorporating um, about uh, copyright and patents and um, how to protect your own intellectual property or how to work with employees that may be doing art in your um, business to make sure that everyone is on the same page. So this is a great resource. Just let us know if you would like it. You can email me at, uh, again, ebrown at glassroots.org. I also am committed to trying to find resources that can be helpful to small and micro craft entrepreneurs um, in all of this uncertainty. And I came across one other resource I want to make you avail um, aware of. It's called the New Jersey 30 Day Fund. And this is their email address, I mean, their web address, nj30 number 30 day fund.com. And what this is, is a really, I think, um, right on time kind of development. This is a new fund that you can apply to for forgivable business loans of up to $3,000. Now, these loans are aimed at businesses that have, uh, you need to have been in business for at least one year in order to qualify. And you also need to have employees, um, at least three employees and then a maximum of 30 employees. But that could capture a lot of people, right? And they don't say, at least in their initial write-up, whether those employees have to be full-time or not. So, um, 
the loan is set up so that it can be forgiven. If you do wish to repay it, then it's going to go back into the fund and be made available to other entrepreneurs. So it's, it's really something that you want to look into if you need um, some additional capital. And they call it the 30-day fund because they're thinking that this is the amount of money that can help you get through a 30-day um, period when, uh, again, there's so much uncertainty. Um, going on. So take a look at both of those things and um, I'm glad to be able to uh, to share those. All right, so I am going to now try to do a screen share. Let's see if this works um, to talk to you a, a bit about pricing. Pricing is one of the most important parts of running a business, getting your prices right and having the confidence to charge the prices that your products are worth. Um, everybody struggles with this. So if you are, don't, you know, don't feel like you're unusual. Um, but it's really worthwhile to make sure that your prices are not only, well, first of all, that they are covering your costs. We're going to go over that in a minute. Um, but also that they're generating enough profit for you that it makes your business um, sustainable and have the potential for growth um, or the potential to continue to offer the, the income that you are in business, um, you know, partially to uh, achieve. So all of that comes together in the price and that's what we're going to go over today. So let me see if I can get this screen share working. Okay, and there's pricing and share. Oh, wow, look, it works. Okay, great. Okay, so um, again, one of the most important things that we do, this is where the revenue comes in that can cover the cost of making your product, of operating your business, and then of generating profit, which you can use in several different ways, which I'll get to in the um, later on. But that's our goal, um, to have profit that we can use in the ways that are important to us. Okay. So the, your price shows the value that you see in the product that you're making. Right, so you want to be sure that you are um, thinking about what your product is, who your customer is, um, what your product is for, and that you develop a price that reflects all of that. Um, the process of coming up with your price is really not that complicated. Um, it just takes a little bit of effort to go to go through it. It's a two-step formula. The first part of it is designed to um, figure out what your production costs are, what it actually costs you to make one of your products. And once you know that, then you can figure out what price is going to um, cover those costs. And there are a couple of calculations that are really widespread in the industry. Um, and as craft entrepreneurs, we often are not, um, we don't feel confident in our pricing. This will give you the information that you need to price with confidence and um, to be able to explain to anyone, including yourself, why you have the prices that you do. Okay, so the first part of the um, of pricing your product is to figure out what your production costs are. Basically, how much it costs you to get one piece of your item made. So if you look at the, do I get a pointer? Hopefully I do. Um, that's gonna include all of your materials costs. So those are your raw materials um, to make your product. And then the cost of, the labor to produce it and the labor can be yourself right or it can be somebody that you um, hire or outsource to in order to 
get your product made. And I'm trying to use some new words here, some different words to see if um, that, that will maybe resonate a little bit better. Production costs are also called variable costs though. So if you have heard that term before, same thing, okay? So here's a super simple example. Let's say that you make necklaces and um, the necklace uh, consists of a um, pendant that is made with glass, for example, and a um, cloth cord that you're gonna put it on. And the pendant costs $4 and the cloth, cloth cord costs $1. So if those are the two things that go into your product, then your raw materials costs are gonna be $1 plus $4, which equals $5, okay? Then let's say it takes you 30 minutes to make the pendant and to string it onto the cloth and do whatever finishing that you need to do um, to the cloth. So you record that it's gonna take 30 minutes to make it, and then you have to figure out how much you're paying per hour, either to yourself or to someone else to make the product. And when you're thinking about that cost, you really want to focus on making sure that you are paying enough to bring the skill that's necessary to create the product. Okay, so you can't under count this and a lot of people do. Sometimes people just focus on the raw materials and forget altogether to add the time in. So you want to focus on how long it takes you to make it. Just get yourself a timer, a little egg timer, and turn it over and see how long it takes when you have finished one. And then the skill. So I'm going to use just in this example $20 an hour as what I think it would uh, cost in this example to make the necklace at the skill level that I that I know is is required. It's going to take some. I'm gonna, if I had to hire someone, it would cost me twenty dollars an hour. So I have my five dollars of raw materials cost, and then thirty minutes at twenty dollars an hour is going to be one half of twenty because it's one half of an hour. So that's ten dollars. So my total production cost would be $5 in raw materials, $10 in time and labor, and for a total of $15. That's my total production cost, right? So that's the first thing that you have. Any price that you come up with has to be more than $15. Otherwise, you either have to lower your um, your labor cost or one of your raw materials costs or you'll never make money okay so you, you it has to be more than fifteen dollars but in general there are some things in the industry that help us here there's something called a markup which is how much you increase your um your cost or your price over your costs in order to um begin selling your product. And depending on what your industry is, it's two to three times the production cost. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's important to know it because other people are gonna be assuming that, um, which we'll, I'll get to in a minute, when they see your pricing. So let's look at the markup. So if we were, marking this up by two times, okay, we'll start at the lower level, then you take your $15 times two, and that would be your wholesale price of $30, okay? I'll get into the difference between wholesale and retail in just a minute. But then, so $30 would be the wholesale price, and if you're going to be selling retail, you'd actually multiply that again by two to get your retail price. And what the markup does is it adds to your production costs, the amount that you need to cover your other business operating costs and to generate your profit, right? So 
The markup includes money that you can use for your overhead costs like rent, advertising, utilities, other kinds of costs that you have to pay as part of your business. These are often called fixed costs as well because you have to pay them whether you um, sell anything or not, right? So the markup provides for overhead and the markup also provides for your profit after taxes. Don't forget that you have to pay taxes. Um, so the higher your markup, the more funds you'll have available for these two purposes, right? Because your production costs, your raw materials, and your labor are basically already covered, okay? So I think overhead, this can be um, something that gets a lot of people stuck because they're trying to um, divide up their overhead into you know, how much of my light bill should I apply to each product? Um, when you use a markup, you can just, um, you'll, you'll have additional funds every time you make a sale, and then you can use it toward these costs without having to do individual calculations on them. Okay, so once you have um, made a sale, right then you apply um, part of that to your overhead and then the remainder of it is your profit profit can be used to reinvest in your business it can be used to support causes that you feel are important um, to you you can pay yourself from the profit and um, there's one other thing which I'm forgetting and I'll come back to it when I remember. Okay, but those are the kinds of things. So where does this take us in terms of pricing? We've got, I'm gonna go back one second. Okay, so we have this retail price. This is what we would be selling our necklace for if we're selling directly to customers, not to um, large companies that would sell for us or other companies that are gonna buy in bulk and sell for us. So this is the starting point, but it's not the ending point. Remember I said it's a two-step process? So you have your $60 retail price that you start with, and then you need to take a look at the market and compare your $60 price um, to what is in the market for your target customer. Okay, so you have to think about your customer and think about a price range that would work for them. Now, how do you find out what the price range for products similar to yours uh, might be? And there are a couple of ways to do it. And um, my suggestion is really to spend some time on this because the market will tell you what the price can be. You don't have to, and that will give you a great deal of confidence. You don't just have to make it up yourself or, um, you know, see which way the wind is blowing that day. Um, you can go to um, handmade um, business sites uh, like Etsy or um, Amazon Handmade and others just to give yourself a general idea, um, but you don't wanna go too much with those because sometimes the people who are on Etsy don't um, necessarily know how to price their products either. If you do use Etsy, make sure that you look at a um, shop that has a good number of sales and good customer service so that you're looking at a price that um, is, is going to be more relevant to you. Um, but also you can really just Google um, products that are similar to yours, but that are handmade, okay? If you're a craft entrepreneur, you should be focusing on handmade and not looking at um, products that you can get that might look similar, but you know that the quality is not the same as yours um, that you're making by hand. 
Okay. And then you use that information to develop a price that you think um, will work. And the th point that's really great is that generally when people are not getting sales and they're worrying about that, it's not usually because the price is too high. Don't assume that as your first um, consideration that I must have priced this too high. Most of the time it's because it's a marketing issue. It's that your price, your product is not in front of your target customer. If you've really thought through who you're trying to sell to well, then you will have, you um, will have to develop a marketing strategy that follows that and gets your product to the right person who's willing to understand um, the workmanship, the customer service, the packaging, the um, shipping, all of those different things and recognizes that your price is a fair price. Um, you also, I'm gonna to come to confidence in a second. You also have to stay at it. Don't let yourself get dis discouraged because you haven't gotten sales right away. It is more likely the case, as I said before, that your product is not in front of the right buyer. So keep going. Once you get that first sale, that will begin to generate um, confidence. There's nothing that feels quite as good as when you get the first sale, when the market um, looks at your product and says, yes, I want to have that. And I want to have it for the price that you're selling it for. And the more you do it, the more confidence you will, um, you will get. And it really becomes um, sort of self-fulfilling. Just stay at it. Don't give up. And then remember that prices can change. You are not locked in forever once you come up with a price. Think of it more as a little bit of a testing period. Give yourself some um, time and see what happens. You know, uh, try different markets, different marketing strategies. And then as long as you know what your costs are, and what basic costs you must cover, then you'll know um, what range of prices you can, you can work with. Um, so understanding your basic costs will also give you the confidence to continue um, working on this. And it is a process. And eventually you'll get to the point where you feel um, confident and you can grow. Prices do need to be high enough to keep your business sustainable. I think this is my last slide. Let me just check. Yeah, that's it. So I can stop this share. Okay. Um, one of the reasons that I think um, craft entrepreneurs can burn out on their business is because their prices are too low. Their prices are so low that they get sales um, because people see a deal, they see a bargain, but then you spend all of your time making, making, making that one product that doesn't generate enough income for you to either continue your business or to grow. So um, take a look at this really carefully while you have some time and um, also look at your processes and see, is there anything you can do more efficiently? Um, are there any things that you can buy in bulk or buy in a different way? Um, get creative. This is the, the moment to do that. But remember that your pricing um, is, it's one of those things that is both complex and simple. Um, once you know your cost, you're halfway there, and then it's the confidence to, um, you know, keep going with the price that you know that you really do deserve. Okay, so that's the section for today. Session for today. Just want to remind you again to look into NewJersey30DayFund.com. 
and see if that can work for you. Three employees in business for one year, um, up to 30 employees, and then $3,000. So it's a lot of threes there. And our entrepreneur startup kit. And then, of course, at Glassroots, we are so thankful that we're able to offer these um, um, virtual studios free of charge to the community at large. Um, but if you are able to support us with a donation, we would certainly appreciate it. We have reopened our um, studios on a limited basis to new classes. It's thrilling to see young people, young adults, and um, and uh, young campers there in the studio every day. So if you're able to support us, we would uh, love that. You can do it by just sending a, um, going to our website, um, www.glassroots.org and hitting the donate button. It's very simple to do and we would be grateful for that. Okay, so thanks very much. If you have questions, just email me at ebrown at glassroots.org and I'll get right back to you. Thanks so much. Take care.